Damped, forced <coughs> oscillations. So let's think about the following case. Uh, suppose Suppose you have the mass as, let's just put one, and you have C, oops, your C is equals to four, and K equals to eight. Because this should be kilograms, this should be Newtons per meters. What's this one? Uh, let's see. Newtons divided by meters per second. So uh, Newton second over meters. So these are, let's say, they, this, these are given. Okay? If uh, external force of uh, f of x equal to, let's say, um, 3 cosine uh, 5t is given, is given. find the general solution and also the steady periodic solution. Okay, let me explain what steady periodic as we go along. Okay? Solution. You just have to remember the master equation. It should be 1 times x double prime plus 4 times x prime plus 8 times x equal to the external force, which is 3 cosine 5t. Let's suppose we have such a thing. We first have to come up with the characteristic equation r squared plus 4r plus 8 equal to 0, which gives you, well, let's, let's complete the square. What goes in here? 2. 2, because it's half of 4, right? And then plus what gives you 8? 2 squared is 4. 4 plus what gives you 8? 4. Okay, so that's, that's the characteristic equation. r plus 2 squared is negative 4. r plus 2 is plus minus 2i because taking the square root of 4 is 2. Taking the square root of negative 1 is i. And then r is equal to negative 2 plus minus 2i, which tells you that x complementary is what? C1. C1. E to the negative 2x. Negative 2t. Remember, the variable here is t. Cosine 2t. Plus c2, e to the negative 2t, sine 2t. That's the complementary. Now, what about xp? I have cosine 5t, so I should include that. What else should I include in xp? Sine, sine 5t, right? Because if you differentiate this, you get sine. So I have b sine 5t. All right. So I'm going to differentiate this uh, negative 5a cosine oh, sine cosine. 
เอาไปไอ I think it's good to keep track of the cosines and sine so if something turns into a sine put it on the sine side that, that's easier okay? so if you differentiate this that's sine so I'm going to write sine 5t here the chain rule says there's a negative 5 appearing negative because the derivative of cosine is negative sine and 5 because the derivative of the inside function is 5 5t differentiates to 5 and a is here. And I intentionally put it over here because it's a sign. It aligns with this. And then if I differentiate this, it will be 5b cosine 5t. Okay, differentiating one more time. Now this one becomes sine with a negative, so it's negative 25b sine 5t. If I differentiate this, that's negative 25a sine 5t. Okay? All right, now we have to plug in everything into this function, right? So let's see what we have to multiply. This one, what do I have to multiply? Times? Wait, what would it be? Cosine. Oh, sorry, this should be cosine. Okay, so back to here. What should I multiply? Eight. Eight. Okay. For this one, what should I multiply? Four. 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 Okay. For this one, I don't multiply anything because that that just has one, right? So once I have that, then I I add up <coughs> everything. That I can keep. That way, I can easily keep track of which is which. So on the left side, I will have x double prime p plus 4x p prime plus 8xp. That will be the left side. And that's equal to, if I add up all the cosines, let's see. 8 times a minus 25. What's that? Negative 17a. What did you do? 8 times a uh -huh. added to negative 25a. What about the 4? And the four, oh, one. four times five, 20. twenty b. That's in front of cosine five t. Right. Good. No. No, because it's eight, eight, eight times a, then four times negative five, and then twenty. Yeah, but the coefficients are different. You have an a and a b, so you can't put them together. Eight times a, twenty b, negative twenty five a. I'm adding them, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Only these two are like terms. Yeah. 8a minus 25a is negative 17a. And 5 times 4 is 20, so I get 20, 20 b. Let's also compute the, the sine side. What do you get on the sine? I guess these two are like terms. 8b minus 25b, what's that? Negative 17b, right? Okay, and then 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. Sine 5t. And that, therefore, <coughs> negative 17a plus 20b should equal to 3. It was 3 there. And negative 17b minus 20b zero. should be 0. All right, and we have to solve this. Oh, not B, it should, it should be A. Okay, so we have to solve this. Let's, let's do this. Uh, we, we, we'll just uh, solve this for A. So A is equal to negative 17 over 20 B. Plug it back into here. Wait, isn't 17 and 20 both negative? So it would be positive 17 over 20b? No, if I move it to the other oh, side, it would be positive 20, and then divide it, it would be negative. Okay. So put it back in here. So I get 17 times 17, which is 289 over 20b, plus 400 over 20b equals to 3. So that gives me 689 over 20, and then if, you, if I uh, divide it to the other 
other side, I get 60 over 689. Okay, so that's your B. And then uh, that means A is, uh, if I multiply negative 17, I don't think this is divisible by, no, this can't be divisible by okay. So I'm going to be getting 3 times 17, so that's 51 over 689. Okay, so those are the values. And therefore, what's my general solution? Xg is Xc plus Xp. Uh, the complementary one, if you remember, they both had e to the negative 2t in there. And it was C1 cosine 2t plus C2 sine 2t. And then, and then uh, you have this thing plus, actually mi minus, minus 51 over 689, Co uh, what's cosine 5t? Yeah, cosine 5t. And then plus 60 over 689, sine 5t. So that's the general solution. Oh, when you plugged in A for yeah. Uh, B, yeah. uh, doesn't that equal zero? Don't you want it to be zero? Why does it equal three? Like no, no, I need three, three cosine 5t yeah, plus zero, zero. zero sine oh, 5t. So the zero is here. Oh, okay. And this system is solved. Okay. All right, so this is what we get. Uh, <clears throat> Now, let's try to see what this means. When time passes, what's the behavior of this exponential function, e to the negative 2t? What's the behavior of this function if t goes, t increases? Does this increase or decrease? That's my question. Huh? Decrease. It decreases, right? It gets closer and closer to zero. You, this is what we call exponentially decreasing to zero. It's, it's going down to zero very fast. So no matter how big these C1 and C2 are, almost immediately you're going to see that this is just going down to zero. Okay? So this is like meaningless after some time. You're not going to see this. It will be almost zero. So physically this doesn't count. And after some time, the only thing that's really working is this one. Now, uh, so therefore, this much is called the transient solution. And this much, including the minus sign, this much is called the steady periodic solution. Meaning that uh, it, it doesn't die off. Because you have this external force constantly trying moving this thing, it doesn't die off. This dies off. So those are the words. So therefore, uh, to answer the second part of the question, this is the answer. The steady periodic solution. And the steady periodic solution will always have the same angle of frequency as the input uh, external force. In, in the electrical circuits case, there is always the input voltage, which is AC, alternating current. <coughs> uh, if that, that's put in, the system will behave with this steady periodic one uh, that has the same kind of frequency as the input one. The only difference is that there will be very uh, different amplitudes, and also there will be some lag. That's the phase angle. So that, that's the meaning of this. Now finally, let me ask, uh, is this system underdamped, overdamped, or critically damped? You forgot the language? What was that? Underdamped means you don't have much damping. If you don't have much damping, would it vibrate or would it just not vibrate at all? 
It it's going to vibrate because it, if there's no damping, it will behave pretty much like the undamped case, right? It, it's it, it's going to go back and forth. Now look at this transient solution. It, is it going back and forth? Right. So uh, when when we talk about underdamped, overdamped, critically damped, we are only talking about the transient transient solution, whether it does vibrate or not. This does have the vibrating part, right? It's going back and forth. It crosses the the equilibrium infinitely many times. So this case is what you call the underdamped under one. Okay. Now, what if you solve the difference, uh, the characteristic equation, and got two real values? That means you get two exponential functions, right? Which both decrease to zero. That means it either it, it can at most cross the equilibrium once. Okay. That's that's what it means. In that case, you would call the system over that. Okay. When you solve the character equ equation and you get the uh, double root, you just have one number for that characteristic equation, so that you, you get one solution as an exponential function, and you, you get the other solution by multiplying by t. In that case, you call really? critically that. That's when you have the same r? Yeah, you have uh, solutions. You don't have two solutions, you, get, you just get one real solution. So you have to distinguish between those three. And that would be like the, the easy like what, three point question. Could you say that stuff again? Okay, so let me repeat. Underdamped, overdamped, and critical damped. Underdamped is when the solution contains a complex number. Your character equation gives you two complex numbers. Overdamped is when you have two distinct real numbers. And uh, critically damped is when you have one single solution. Okay. So I will be asking you that question. Uh, and please Wait, uh, get confused between it. Um, can you say him again? <laughs> <laughs> Underdamped, overdamped, critically damped. Under is when. Uh... Underdamped when you cross the zeros infinitely many times. Over damped and critically damped when you can at most cross points. Okay. You said critical. You said over is when you have a plus or minus bi, right? Yes. Yes. That's how you can get cosine and sine. Critical. No, that's under. 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 Under, under damped is when you have cosine and sine. Over when you have is a plus like minus five. Yeah. yeah, but if you have two distinct roots, so then critical, critical, critical is just one, 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 one